Hello and welcome to the Feed My Sheep Foundation Bible Study video channel. Today's video will be our continued Bible study in the book of Jeremiah. We are on chapter 45 and this is a very, very small chapter with only five verses. But what we are going to see in this uh, small chapter, we're going to see how the Heavenly Father decrees and declares out of his word that whenever an individual does do right by a prophet, that they will receive a prophet's reward. Now, we did talk about this whenever we did come across this individual, whenever we were doing our Bible study previously in, in other chapters. Uh, we did talk about the individual, and his name is Baruch. We talked about him because he was the one that did come with confirmation of the fact that God was telling the children of Israel that it was okay for them to go over into the land of uh, Babylon and to be under the king of Babylon, King Nebuchadnezzar, and he would rule over them. And that was the will of God for them at that particular point in time for their safety and for them to re begin to rebuild and just to start to have a life and to uh, just go forward and living. And uh, in other words, those that were currently in Jerusalem, they were going to be destroyed, though, he was saying, because of the rebellion and because of all that they were doing and disobedient to his word and what God had previously led them forward to do. So, therefore, uh, Baruch, he did come with a confirmation from heaven uh, in uh, backing up all the words that Jeremiah said. And in him doing that, God said he's going to be rewarded. Because God has already decreed and declared from his word that there is a prophet, uh, a prophet's reward, reward for an individual who does receive the prophets whenever that prophet comes before them with a message from heaven because it's basically God, okay? We know that. Uh, it's God's presence coming before an individual per people or place to or thing to uh, present heaven. In that particular format for whatever it may be needed okay so this individual Baruch he had discernment enough to accept and believe that so therefore he's going to be rewarded by God so we read about that in this small chapter 45 he starts with the word that Jeremiah the prophet spoke to Baruch the son of Neriah when he had written these words in a book at the mouth of Jeremiah in the fourth year of Jehoiakim, the son of Josiah, king of Judah. And this is what the word of the Lord was. And also Baruch was that individual that did uh, oftentimes wrote the things that Jeremiah told him to write down. Okay, so he was very obedient to the spirit of the Lord, basically, because that's what Jeremiah represents, because he's a part of the kingdom of heaven. He's a part of the children of Israel in the Old Testament. And God uses him prophetically in the prophetic ministry. So he represents God, God's mouth, God's mouth, God's character, God's hand in the earth dealing with the children of Israel. Okay. And so uh, then verse two says, thus says the Lord, the God of Israel unto you, O Baruch, for thou didst say, woe is me now, for the Lord has added grief to my sorrow. And I fainted in my sigh, and I find no rest, okay? For thus shalt thou say unto him, the Lord says to you, Behold, that which I have built will I break down, and that which I have planted I will pluck up, even this whole land. So that was in reference to Jerusalem, okay? Because that was the message that God gave to Jeremiah from the beginning all the way we're seeing throughout this whole book of Jeremiah that he was going to destroy them. And so he just reminds him with that particular saying as it refers to people also, okay? Because he says that to him individually. Because he begins to say here in verse 3, Thou didst say, Woe is me now, for the Lord has added grief to my sorrow. I'm sad. I faint in my sighing, and I find no rest, okay? So he's sad because of all that's taking place, but God is also letting him know. What he say here? Behold, that which I have built will I break down, and that which I have planted I will pluck up, even this whole land. 
And he says, and seekest thou great things for thyself? You know, you're seeking the best for yourself. Don't seek that. For behold, I will bring evil upon all flesh, says the Lord. But thy will, but, I mean, sorry, but thy life will I give unto you for a prey in all places where thou goest. So, you know, even though God is saying he will bring adversity whenever he gets ready to bring adversity upon anybody. Uh, and basically, in doing so, whenever there is a rebellion, it's more frequently added. And we can see that. And he's showing it to us here in this in his word. And often we can see it throughout the earth also today. All you know, when we take a look out into the land. And uh, just truly grasp the concept of what God is doing. So anyway, he tells this man, Baruch, about who he is and how he operates in his character. But nevertheless, let him know in this verse 5, but, that, but your life will I give unto you for a prey in all places whither thou goest. But he's going to bring evil upon all flesh. And that's just reminding him that, you know, that's who he is also, to bring good and to bring evil. Whenever there is an instance when there is a uh, disobedient. But as for him, he's safe and secure. Because he tells him that here in verse 2, Thus says the Lord, O God of Israel, unto you, O Baruch, even though you say, Woe is me now, for the Lord has added grief to my sorrow. I faint in my side, and I find no rest. But say this unto the unto him, the Lord has said, Behold, that which I have built, I'll break down, and that which I have planted, I will pluck up even this whole land. And seekest thou great things for yourself, don't seek that, for behold, I'll bring evil upon all flesh, says the Lord, but your life, I'm going to spare it, okay? And that's basically the same thing he told, isn't that what he said to those that were obedient in the land of Israel? He did, over in chapter 21 in uh, the book of Jeremiah. So if we go back to chapter 21, and then down to uh, verse 9, he says, He that abides in this city shall die by the sword, and by the famine, and by pestilence. But he that goes out, like I'm telling him to do, okay? It, like I have uh, given the vision for your provision, to be able to provide for you. I've given that vision to Jeremiah to tell you what to do. And if you just heed what he's saying, he's saying, then you will be fine. But he says, but he that goes out and falls to the Chaldeans that besiege you, he shall live and his life shall be unto him for a prize. Okay, a prize. He shall be able to live his life. And then if we go over to, let's see here, let's go to, uh, Verse, thir uh, I'm sorry, chapter 38 in the same book, Jeremiah, chapter 38, and verse 2. The Lord says, he that remains in this city shall die by the sword, by famine, and by pestilence. But he that goes forth to the Chaldeans shall live, for he shall have his life for a prey and shall live. Okay, so Baruch was in agreement with the Lord. He came into covenant with the Lord because he came into agreement. That's what agreement is, coming into a covenant. Whenever you believe someone, whenever you agree with them, you come into a covenant with what they uh, believe. And so that's what Baruch did. He came into agreement with the Lord. So therefore, the Lord is going to reward him. As he told others that did do as Jeremiah the prophet came into their presence to, to give them instructions on how to go forward. Um, let's see. So Matthew, I was laying over into the book of Matthew in reference to this chapter and in reference to Baruch and his behavior of being obedient because the Lord has decreed out of his word, obedience is better than sacrifice. And that's what Baruch was doing. He was obeying the spirit of the Lord. So I'm led over into Matthew chapter 10 where Jesus Christ says this same thing in reference to a prophet's reward because as I stated at the beginning of this Bible study for this chapter that's what this book the revelation uh, we receive from reading this chapter in reference to Baruch we see the uh, word of God being revealed 
in reference to a prophet's reward, okay? And it's noted here in Matthew chapter 10, verse 40, he that receives you receives me, and he that receives me receives him that sent me. For he that receives a prophet in the name of a prophet shall receive a prophet's reward. He that receives a righteous man in the name of a righteous man shall receive a righteous man's reward. And whosoever shall give to drink unto one of these little ones a cup of water, only in the name of a disciple, verily I say to you, he shall in no wise lose his reward. So there is a reward to any who believes in the spirit of the living God. Whenever it begins to go forward and what God's uh, accomplishment with his spirit in the earth is and how it goes forward to do whatever it God uh, decides to do through an individual, whatever that may be. Nevertheless, again, there's a reward in uh, receiving that prophet. And so that's what happened with this Baruch guy in reference to Jeremiah, because Jeremiah was a prophet at that particular moment in time, and he did receive what the word of the Lord was coming through him in reference to the people going into uh, Babylon, into safety, into being under the uh, King Nebuchadnezzar. He did follow after what the words of the Lord was uh, in reference to that and so therefore God is saying that he's going to receive the same reward as the other people that obeyed his voice in the original beginning of what God told the children of Israel to do in reference to statutes commandments and all of that because there was a set few remnant that did keep that were obedient and again those were told what to do where to go and they will do it. And then those that did not, who were not following after his statutes or his commandments, even in the beginning, of course, they're going to stay in Jerusalem. Because, again, they're walking in disobedience to God. So, therefore, they're not going to hear any instructions on where to go or what to do. Because they've already been given instructions on what to do and where to go, what God says, how to behave. And they haven't taken that. So, they're definitely not going to take instructions on where to go and what to do. Because that's a part of God's words and his mouth and his uh, command. Um, so I'm also led over to chapter, let's see here, 32 in reference to this Baruch character. Chapter 32 in the book, same book, Jeremiah, 32 and then uh, verse 6. Okay, so uh, chapter 6 through 16, we can see, I'm not going to read for the sake of time when this video is going up because there's a lot of, but we can see here, this is the uh, example where Baruch comes into, maybe I will read it, chapter uh, 32, verse 6, Jeremiah uh, thus and Jeremiah said, the word of the Lord that came to him, and this is what the Lord said, Behold, Hamenio, the son of Shalom, thy uncle, shall come unto you, saying, buy a field. Okay, and so then he's going to go ahead and buy the field. And then I'm going to skip around verses, because we just want to go to the part about Baruch. And I gave the, the evidence, the deed over to purchase to Baruch, the son of Deriah, the son of Medelite. Okay, and I charged Baruch before them, saying, Thus says the Lord of hosts to God, I will take these evidence, this evidence of the purchase, both which is sealed and this evidence which is open, and put them in the earthen vessel. For thus shall the Lord of hosts, the God of Israel, <clears throat> says he's going to also replenish the people of God basically with new houses. So this is just one episode with Baruch just being obedient to what Jeremiah is telling him to do and then another instance we see him in chapter 36 and I'm just going over some places where he was mentioned throughout the book of Jeremiah and his and how he responded to Jeremiah with obedience, willingness to go forward and do whatever he commanded him to do in reference to the kingdom. In uh, chapter 36, we see him, verse 27, 
The word of the Lord that came to Jeremiah after that the king had burned the roll and the words which Baruch wrote after the mouth of Jeremiah, saying, Now, so here we see and go back into in this chapter where Baruch had written down certain words that Jeremiah commanded him to write that the Heavenly Father was giving him to write down. And then, so he was obedient to Jeremiah in that aspect. Uh, let's see here. And that began actually over in verse 4. What is this whole chapter we can read about? The individual Baruch. And then another chapter we have with him, uh, let's see here, 43. And 43 is actually the chapter where he did confirm the word of the Lord that Jeremiah was saying in reference to telling the people it was okay for them to go over and be under uh, the king Nebuchadnezzar and that was the will of God for them at that particular point in time for safety, provision, protection, because he was getting ready to destroy Jerusalem. So it was just in that moment in time, that's what he was commanding them to do. And so Baruch, and we can see this in chapter 43, he, 43, he came and confirmed the word of the Lord that Jeremiah had said. But the people didn't believe him. They thought that he was speaking falsely and they were that he was trying to lead them over there to be killed but he wasn't okay so that is going to bring us to the conclusion of our bible study today for the uh chapter 45 in the book of jeremiah we have 52 yes 52 chapters in this book we're nearing the end of the book of jeremiah and then we're going to go into Lamentations, which is a, another book written by uh, Jeremiah where he's taking notes of his feelings, his emotions, and everything that he experienced while he was writing down all the words that God was giving him in reference to going forward with all of the uh, judgments because of the rebellion of the children of Israel. All right, so God bless you, God be with you, and I will see you on our next Bible study as we go forward with the Feed My Sheep Foundation Bible study video channel.